Welcome to Unit 5, Lecture 1. In this lecture, we're going to talk about how life is cellular. Learning objectives. Explain the main points of cell theory. Explain how microscopes work. Compare prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Cells are tiny. You might have already looked at them in middle school. And so we're going to spend a little more time looking at cells in this unit. Anton van Leeuwenhoek was the first to actually observe living. That's the big thing here, living. Um, Robert Hooke had seen the dead cells of cork prior to Leeuwenhoek seeing uh, actual stuff living in pond water, which is something you're actually going to be able to do this unit. And what Leeuwenhoek saw was these tiny little things that looked like they were doing all the things that life did. And he was very confused. But now we understand that he was actually looking at cells. He was looking at probably protists um, and other freshwater, because he was looking in a pond. He was looking at freshwater microorganisms. Right. The cell theory goes along with Reedy's experiment where the fact that cells can't just come, um, they're not just born out of nothing. They have to come from something. So all living things are made up of cells. Life needs cells, okay? Without cells, life doesn't happen. Now those macromolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids, those come together to make cells. Okay, and they are working parts of cells, but cells need to be whole in order to be alive. And cells are the basic units of structure and function in living things. Whether we're talking about unicellular things or multicellular things, cells are the basic unit. And then new cells are produced from existing cells. You can't just blink, poof, snap your fingers, whatever, and all of a sudden you get a new cell. They have to come from somewhere. This was a huge thing when it came to understanding um, life, understanding reproduction, because we had to figure out the original cell that created the rest of them. We use microscopes to explore the cell. We're going to use the light microscope okay, in class, which is one if you've um, if you use them in middle school, it's probably what you use. So we're going to use the light microscope. So it looks like that, except we actually have a light bulb. All right. And then there's the scanning electron microscope and the transmission electron microscope. They're very important for different reasons. And we may not have electron microscopes because um, they're really expensive. But we still use light microscopes even up into the collegiate and academic research and medical research fields. So here are three different pictures okay, that were taken from different microscopes. And this is going to kind of highlight why we might use the different microscopes. So the light microscope, okay, which is once again what you'll be doing. Now this is a pretty light microscope that um, the stuff has been dyed all sorts of different colors. So it won't necessarily look that pretty um, here. But the light microscope, we can still see living things. Okay, we can watch living organisms under the light microscope. Organisms, right? We can watch living organisms under the light microscope. You might even be able to watch some living organisms um, from the pond water in the back of the room, um, make a slide and actually see some things in there. All right, the second one is the transmission electron microscope. So this is to see the inside. Okay, so this is one cell. All right. This is one cell, and we can actually see the inside, whereas this is one cell right there. Okay, <clears throat> and the transmission electron microscope allows us to actually see the inside of cells really well. And then the scanning electron microscope, so again, one cell. Okay. So one cell where, but this is where we can actually see the outside really well, okay? We can actually see the outside of that cell really well. So the 
transmission and the elect, uh, scanning are much better um, magnifying, uh, increased, oops, increased magnification, but they have to be dead. Okay, the, um, the way we prepare slides to look at through the electron microscope, it actually kills the organism. So we can't see living processes in action, whereas in the, in the light microscope, we can see living organisms in action, which is actually pretty cool. Cells are small, all right? It's what it boils down to. And that's why we need to use the microscope. So you can kind of see here, all right, here, and here, where you can see the difference, the little bit of overlap here between the light microscope and the electron microscope and the light microscope and the unaided eye, okay? So we can see an egg. You can see an egg. Right? We really can't see a cell without a microscope. Right? There's no way to actually see one cell without a microscope. Um, it gets even harder to see bacterial cells, and we'll talk a little bit more about these two and then organelles. So you can kind of see virus, the cold virus, the ronovirus, DNA. We can, we can't, we can see the molecule um, in a real long strand if it's prepared properly without a microscope, but it's very hard to actually see the, um, the whole thing in depth. Okay. Prokaryotes and eukaryotes, we're gonna talk a little bit more about, and you're gonna get to see under the microscope. Prokaryotic cells, bacteria. So you can see smaller, less complicated. And then eukaryotic cells, we have two. We have the animal cell and the plant cell. Okay. Um, and if you look at them, they're very similar. There's just a few few differences. Um, the central vacuole is one, so that's a big storage compartment, and the chloroplasts. Okay. And this thing on the outside here, okay, the cell wall. But other than that, for the most part, animal cells and plant cells are actually very similar. Um, that's why you you know you share about 50% of your genes with a banana. So that's pretty good, right? <laughs> okay, so you can see some of these differences here. Okay. The biggest thing here is the prokaryotic cell has no nucleus. Okay. Whoops. The prokaryotic cell has no nucleus where the eukaryotic cells do. That's the biggest difference. If you see a nucleus, you know that there's a... Um, What's it called? Uh, you know that it's a eukaryotic.